מתייחס ממש שום דבר לבנייה של דיסטריבישן בצורה של סיפן ולהעלות את זה אם אנחנו רוצים. אני רציתי לעשות כזה דבר, רציתי לבנות מודול ולהעלות אותו, אבל אני לא אספיק להעלות אותו לסיפן, אז אני אראה איך בונים אותו, איך בונים משהו מ-0 ו... ‫תוכלו לעשות את זה בעצמכם, ‫או לפחות להביא את המבניות של ‫סיפור של סיפן. ‫אני רוצה להתחיל בלהראות מבנה כדוגמה. ‫מאוד חשוב שתבינו למה... ‫אוקיי, מעולה. ‫אז כולם יכולים לראות את זה? ‫יש? ‫אתה יכול להגדיל פוד? בום, אפשר לראות את זה? כן. נרצה את זה, זה יותר טוב. בסדר? יש? אוקיי, אז קודם כל אני אסביר למה יש לנו את המבנה הזה, מה השימוש שלו, ואחרי זה אני אעבור ואני אסביר את הקבצים. עכשיו יש לכם שאלות, תצטרכו להרים את היד, אני לא אדע, לפעמים אני רץ מהר מדי, אם זה לאט מדי, אם אתם צריכים לברר, תהיו חייבים להשתתף ולהרים את היד, להגיד... תעצור, תעיד, תסביר, מה זה לא יהיה. אוקיי, בסדר? יש? יש. יש. I can... We sort of, everyone decided what language they're going to do it in, this one's supposed to be in Hebrew. Does anyone mind if I do it in English? Is English okay? I think it's a bit English. Okay, okay. 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 Okay, we'll do it in English. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So um, I'm, starting, I'm going to start with explaining why we have a structure, and then I'm going to go over what the structure is, and then we're going to write something on our own. And um, it's very important that if you have questions, you stop me halfway and, and raise your hand and ask. Otherwise, I'm not going to notice. I'm not going to know. I'm just going to run through it. First of all, the structure for a CPAN distribution is not necessarily only for CPAN. It's just a structure to put your code and your tests and your tool chain files in a coherent way that is easy for other tool chains to use it and for you to be able to parse it out correctly. CPAN itself actually can manage a lot of ways of putting your files, a lot of different ways. But there is a very distinct way that we use that is preferable. Now, you don't have to use CPAN. CPAN itself is only a bunch of mirrors and an upload server. You load it up to the server, upload it, it goes through all the mirrors, and then you can download it and install it. And the toolchain files that we have, like module build, module install, uh, make make file, uh, make maker, uh, they all use these files when they download them to, to install it to your computer. I use this uh, structure for work also, and I'll explain why. It's very useful, it's very coherent, and it allows for correct, clean components that could be reused inside a system without CPAN as well. So we're very important. So, how many of you know what the structure sort of looks like? Have you ever seen the content of a tarball from CPAN? How many of you haven't seen a tarball from CPAN ever? Never opened, never seen it. All right, great, good. That's good, I have some to work with. I have where to start. Basically, the tar is just a tar GZ file. It's some encryption, uh, some um, uh, compression. It's very simple. Inside it, you have a few files and a few directories. You have some files for the licensing, for example, because if you load the CPAN, we have to know what license you're using. But you don't really have to have an inferior work, probably. You have a manifest file which lists what files in a certain directory will go, will go into a, uh, the tarball. Well, what is part of the distribution? Maybe you have a text file that you don't want to be part of the distribution. Maybe you have a dump file for when you run some tests and create some dump files, or you have swap files from your editor, and you don't want those to go into the tarball. Just want certain <coughs> files like the library itself, maybe a few tests, the license. So you have the manifest file. It's basically a text file listing what goes in, and you can see the manifest uh, file here. 
It just includes files. That's it. Very simple. This here is a T or a directory you call T. You have the manifest skip file, which is kind of like a blacklist for the manifest. You don't want to start writing um, this and this and this and this, and it might include other stuff by mistake. You want to be able to specifically, explicitly mention stuff that you don't want to go in. This is a skip file. It's here, and it uses regular expressions. So we can, like anything that starts with git, anything that ends with swap, which is for uh, Vim swap files, uh, anything that is in build or blib, any make file, like the actual make file, which I'll talk about. And this is the manifest skip file. You have a readme. You don't have to have it, but it's useful. Shoot. And one note about manifest, manifest skip. It's easy to uh, to miss a file to include it in the distribution. And you have a, there's a test called the manifest, which checks that everything is in order. So it's good that you have both files in place. Yeah, it's always good to have both files, and it's easy to miss files that often, well, not often, but more than once I've uploaded a file that included <coughs> some other stuff that shouldn't have been there. It could, it could make the distribution larger. It can contain maybe uh, information about your machine or your environment that you don't want people to have. Or it's basically, it's pretty much not necessary, and you should have the manifest. There is a test file um, over here. I do have a test myself that makes sure that I have the files that I want in the manifest. It became that important to people to write a test for it. So, manifest, you have the meta, meta file, which here is uh, YAML. Although uh, new versions of the CPAN tool chain support JSON as well. And the YAML file is basically information about the distribution. It includes what is, uh, who generated it, and uh, the spec that was used, the name, what it provides, the files themselves, and their versions, and a bunch of stuff like that. It's metadata for your distribution. It's information about the distribution itself. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. The YAML file is yeah. automatically generated, or? Yes, if you use uh, the tool chain to create some of the environment, then yes, it's automatically generated. You don't have to write it. You should never write the meta file. Although I, have, although I have one project in which I write the meta file, but it's very, very rare. I don't know anyone who writes it, though Florian probably might. No? All right. Just me. Then. Right. All right. Um, so the readme file is used <coughs> daily for users, not for CPAN itself, because CPAN will actually go through your um, your modules and your plugins and your libraries, and it will generate a pod, which is the documentation that you see in uh, CPAN. It's basically uh, a bunch of formats for uh, document doc documenting code and well anything really, and um, it will go through that and it will render an HTML from that. It doesn't really need your readme. It doesn't do anything with the readme, but users who download it might look for a readme so you have it. Many of the times what we do is just use the library to create the readme automatically. Just check what's in the library, render its text, and throw it in the readme file. So that's, uh, that's something. And uh, the tool chain supports doing that automatically for you. What is this tool chain? Well, which tool chain? Any of those. <coughs> the, the, well, it's not exactly CPAN, but it was it built for CPAN, though you don't have to use it for CPAN. It's like Makefile, the Make toolchain, the, build, uh, the Unix build system. So Perl has a build system, a few. And uh, they will support creating README and MetaYAML automatically. And that's what CPAN uses itself when you upload stuff. All right, we're left with the changes file. The changes file is basically a text file that you're in charge of. That That's where you list what changes you've done in each version of your application or your module. And it's free form, you can do whatever you want. There are some formats that became more common because they're more readable and nicer, but you can do whatever you want. It's simply a text file for users, just like the readme file. Um, May I point out one mine looks like this. Sorry. Sure. I was going to point out one thing. Uh, there, there's a module called, on mm -hmm. CPAN called uh, CPAN Changes which is sort of a suggestion, but it would be really nice if people would adopt that sort of style, and I see you obviously have adopted it, because there's... Uh, dates. Second. I think my dates 
don't conform to what's well, in the it's, place. It, it will block yours. But the thing is, um, if you kind of stick to the convention as documented in uh, C plan color common changes, then your changes file is going to be machine readable. And uh, you, you can write like nice tools that tell you what changed since I last <coughs> installed this, like I upgrade module and only get the, the changes. Yeah, there's a, there's a website me. that uses the common form of change. Uh, of, uh, the change file to be able to tell you in each version that is uploaded what has changed just by getting the that chunk. So while it's free so, form, some puts it Exactly. Nice. While it's free form, it's better to use the common form. This is what I do. This is basically the common form. New releases go up because that's the first thing you want to see. There are some modules, Damien, that writes and they put it in the bottom and every time you open the changes you have to go all the way down. It's really annoying and if if you ever write a change file, please put the first ones up. So I put in uh, version, date, whatever I did. I don't remember why I wrote this. <laughs> All right. Um, so because this is just the date. Done at 1 a.m. That's the reason you did yes, like five, five, Oh, yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> I'm very, um, I'm, uh, very witty. Um, I'll give you an example. What? I will make my birthday. Nice. Then that's another reason. <laughs> this is a change file for Dancer, for example, which probably won't conform. But what we have here, you can ignore the next. That's for us to know where to put stuff. But we have the version, we have the date, and then we put stuff according to, because we have a lot of stuff that we do. We have a ton of stuff. So we put them in brackets according to what is being done. For example, bug fixes. Yeah, there, there, there. this is a GitHub ticket, and whoever did it, uh, other brackets here, uh, whoever did what, and that's, that's for example, our change log. And sometimes we even have uh, code name releases. We release a version of Dancer, we give it a name. So this is after uh, Stefan here. This is your release. Um, all right, so this is a change file, okay? And lastly, uh, in the files here, we have build.pl and makefile.pl. How many of you are familiar with Unix, GNU Linux, BSD, whatever? All right, great. Um, there is a very good uh, tool chain for building and installing applications from source in GNU Linux and in BSD and in other Unix-based operating systems or Unix-inspired operating systems. And what it does is take um, some information about the files and a lot of macros, and it creates the, um, it runs the compiler, then it runs the uh, creating of the objects, and then the installation. And Pro has the same thing. Now Pro divided into two different types. One is the common one. You have a makefile PL that basically has very, um, not a lot of information, but what's necessary. It has the name, the, where to get the version from. You can also have the version, where to get the version from. Prerequisites, uh, for example, um, I wrote algorithm diff callback. So I use algorithm diff and I use carp and exporter and list more utils and list more. And where to install them to and whether I have any executables. Now, um, what it does is run a function called write make file. The module extended, extended utilities <coughs> make maker creates um, a make file using that function and using this information. Now once it does that, if I'll, if I'll run pro makefile.pl at the bottom here, it created my meta and it created a <coughs> JSON one and a YAML one and it created the make file. So I can see here that although I have the make file PL, it created a make file. And the make file here is actually a Unix make file. I can open it. I, like this, and you can see that this is all the information for the uh, Unix tools, the Unix tool chain for building and installing stuff. It just bootstraps off this to be able to do what we want with our Pro files. And once I have this, because there's a make file, I can use the Unix tool chain which has make, and I can do make test. And I can do a bunch of stuff using that make file that exists. And I can do make install. 
So that's one approach, and that's a very common approach. However, that's a very um, rigid approach. It's not very flexible. It's pretty hard to add stuff to it and to maintain it. So um, an idea that came up was if we, if we already have Perl to run the make file, the L file, we have Perl to do everything else as well. So maybe we should write a tool that's just Perl. And one module was written to do this called module build. And it uses a build PL file. And it doesn't use the Unix uh, toolchain system at all. I run Perl build.pl. And then I get a new file called build, which is an exec executable. I can run build, I can run build test, and so forth. So far, so good. When you install a module from CPAN, it downloads it, opens it, looks for makefile.pl or build.pl. If you have a makefile.pl, it would use that because this is actually supported in core. Right? Yeah? Both are. Both are now. Well, in recent versions. <coughs> All right. So nowadays, module build is also shipping in, in modern Perl. And it would use one, of, one of, of these two to build and install it. It will actually run them, the PL file, and then either make, make, test, and make install, or build, build, test, and build, install. And this is how actually uh, CPAN installation works. And what is the difference between build and make file? <coughs> one uses the Unix toolchain, and the other uses pure Perl. Now, build.pl has its deficiencies, and a lot of people don't like that, because it's an, although it's a, it's a nice idea, some people think, feel that the implementation is not right. But this is still, like, there is no other one. And some people <coughs> said that they like the makefile idea, so they wrote module install, which is like, uh, which supports makefile.pl, but in different syntax, which is easier, and has more plugins and stuff like that, somewhere between those because it's a, la a layer of sugar above the make file PL, which allows more flexibility. The make file written in Perl, it's completely made Yeah, there is a few more build systems, but I don't know anyone who really uses them. All right, so this is just uh, to get familiar with what we're seeing. Um, moving on to directories. Mm -hmm. There is the lib directory and the t directory. The lib is used to keep all the, your modules and all your information, and t is used to put test files. Okay, good so far. Who here doesn't write tests? All right, you can. You don't have to. It's okay. You can raise your hand. Continue. All right. So tests are very really useful, and you can write them. You don't have to write them, but you probably should write them, and they're available in t. <coughs> You don't have to put it this way, like I said earlier, but this is much cleaner. Here, for example, I only have, in, in lib, I only have one <coughs> file. Inside lib, we parse it out to the namespace. Every word in the namespace, except the last word, has a directory, and then the last word gets a PM file. <coughs> Theoretically, you can put callback.pm in the <coughs> directory, but this is really not, not as clean, not as easy for toolchain files to use and for these tools to advance instead of trying to support old stuff. So inside the diff callback, you can, see that I have, uh, you can see that I have the package algorithm diff callback, and that's, that's all I need, basically. We'll get to that. How much time do I have? Oh, five. All right, we have to move faster. Inside T, you'll see simply test files. That's it. Just files include tests. For example, <coughs> there's a load test here. I'll remove the matching. So there's a load test here, uses test more, blah, blah, blah. So this is the main structure. And we have a few minutes. I'm going to show you how, from scratch, we'll write something very simple. I'm not going to write what I wanted to, but I'll write something else. And the idea is to get from nothing to something. So. We'll start by creating a directory. Can anyone think of a really small something to do? Hello world. Add to hello. hello. Let's do hello world. All right. So we'll call it hello world. Doesn't matter how I call the parent directory. Inside it, 
what I'm going to do is I can either create my makefile PL or my build PL on my own, my manifest file, everything on my own, or I can use something like module starter. <coughs> if I use module starter, of course I have to install it. Module starter, what it does is actually, actually scaffold the basic skeleton structure. There are a few programs that do it. Module starter is just very famous and very useful. All you have to do <coughs> is include, as you can see here, the module name, the distribution, which is optional because you have, we can have one major parent distribution with a lot of modules in it, if you want. Directory name, if you want to, and whatever builder you're using. These are the three builders we were talking about. One is the basic make maker, the other one is the module build, and the other one is the sugar stuff of make maker called module install. So I'm going to start one, and I have to put the offer. So I'm going to do <coughs> module hello world author, and I'm going to include module install. Specify email, let's include an email. Alright, so what he did, he created everything and then he created a manifest file with the stuff inside it. So I can see hello world here, as I created the changes, ignore, this is to be renamed as your SVN ignore, your git ignore, whatever you're using, if you're using one, your lib, make file pl, manifest readme t, and it actually put in a few tests inside t to get you started. So let's edit what's in lib. In lib I can see they created hello as a directory and world.pm. It has already done that. And it put in just basic stuff, use 5.6, probably updated. Um, some documentation for CPAN, your synopsis, maybe exports that you have, maybe you have some functions. So what we're going to do is um, we have our our version, which is very important to have a version for your files. <coughs> we'll add a subroutine called Hello World, and it will just return Hello World. Very simple. I can write documentation for this. <laughs> Alright, now <coughs> I can write a test for it. I'm going to call it hello. It's a trick, use warnings. I'm going to use the testing module, which is not covered here. Test more. And I'm going to declare I have one test. Then I'm going to use hello world and run. But I'm going to probably export this. Where's the export? <coughs> Yeah, it's just going to be important. Alright, so I'm going to say that if I call hello world, hello, it was a hello world, damn it. Alright, hello world, <coughs> then I'm going to get hello world, it works. That's it, that's a test. If I'll run, I'll run it this way, I see that it works. Basically, I'm asking Perl to use the lib directory and run the test. And all the people who don't write tests, this is much more useful than it seems. It's much more useful. Tests are something completely different, but it's very, 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 very useful Even to get started, much to, get, useful than it seems. to move along, to <coughs> flesh out your API for like a ton of things. Now, as soon as I have this, what I can do is make file, make, then I'll, I'll use sudo here to make install, so it can install it to the system. And as soon as I do that, from any directory in my computer, I can use hello world. I don't need to find the modules anymore. They're simply installed into the system, which is really, really important. We were talking about this. And once you put things in a CPAN module, first of all, I can create, make dist. Now I can create, um, right, I said yes. Now I can create a, a, a file here, hello world 0.01, to RGZ, I can give it to someone, they can run the tests, they can install it to their system, they will automatically have this, and <coughs> to upload it to CPAN. And that's very, that's a, it's like on one leg, but 
it's really crucial, it's very useful. And you don't have to find the binaries, no find lib, no find bin. I don't know how many of you know those tricks to locate where the directory is for the files. There is no directory for the files. It's installed into the system. You always have it available. And then after the manifest, they will put the new Yeah, I need to complain. So uh, I could uh, make this clean, then I'll run it again. Make file, make manifest, it update manifest, make test. There we go. That's simple. So it basically gives you a tool chain to um, check your tests, to create files out of them, to uh, install them into the system so it's available to everyone. If you use something like local lib, you can install it to, a, to your home directory or to a specific local directory and then use only that. And this is pretty much it. Um, does anyone have any questions? Shoot. I'm not sure if I can ask it here, but does it work on Windows also? Does it work on? Windows. Yes. 100%. Like 110%. <laughs> it's fully supported. Actually, the person who wrote, um, you can see the make file PL I'm using. I'm using module install, which, like I said, that's the sugar above X make, maker because it's really hard to maintain. And module install writes it much easier. The guy who wrote this, or at least the guy who maintains it now, uh, works on Windows only. Oh, one of the guys who wrote Padlet. So it's it's 110% compatible with Windows. It's compatible with OS X. It's compatible with Irix. It's compatible with like uh, I think most of the operating systems that Perl supports. Works it is VMS. compatible. Works on VMS, which is a, a nightmare if you ever tried it. No, it's not. All right. <laughs> All right. I worked with it for seven years. It's wonderful. <laughs> The only people who have worked with VMS for seven years will be able to say. <laughs> <laughs> I worked with Irix. That was. Any more questions? There is a few minutes we can. Like any question that you have, it's okay. I'm not going to fight you. Unless you ask. Hey, we don't need this on the build. On the, on the build PL? Yeah. Sure. I'll take this one and open it. <coughs> Build PL is basically Pro. And you change the colors. So, just turn some Yeah. <coughs> All right. So, you have a, a builder object, which is from module build, and you give it information. You can actually include, and that's something that I, I didn't mention. You can include all your dependencies using this tool chain. And whenever you're going to install using cpan minus or cpan, you can actually install a certain tar GC using them. They will automatically search and download and install your dependencies. And if you put something as recommended, it will ask the user if they want to install it. Like if you have additional functionality that you have, you want to recommend, but you don't have to require it, then you can put it under recommends instead of requires, and it will ask people. And that's really useful. For example, here, if I'll, if I'll give you this tar GC and you'll try to install it, use cpan minus, it will download algorithm diff and install it. It will download this more details and install it. Carpet is four and four, so that's no problem. I can even give zero means any version, but I can give version four for zero point three two, and it will make sure that you have at least that version. And build requires says this is stuff I need just for tests. So it's able you're able to differentiate stuff that you need just for the testing of the module versus stuff you need to have installed for the module to work properly and stuff you need for additional functions. All right, um, I have to clean up stuff. For example, this is to create a makefile PL. Build, uh, build PL can create a makefile PL on its own. It can do that. It can create the license automatically. It can create the readme automatically. There it is. So when I use uh, build PL, it will automatically read my file here and create a readme file automatically. So it's very useful. I really like build PL personally. But now I use Distilla, which is another thing I hope to touch, but it's, I can maybe say a few words about it. If there are, there are any more questions? Nothing, really? Did anyone not understand what I said? Or completely lost? Question. Question. Uh, how do you, as, as far as I remember, uh, 
it's uh, a few years ago, it was uh, quite common to use uh, the regular Unix make files. The what? The, that, like the old style Unix make files, like make the, the simple yeah. make file. Uh, and now it's, it moves towards more pure Perl tools. So how would you compare that? Um, I think the make file, Unix make file tool chain is well tested. Definitely more than anything else that you could write because it's used for any project. <coughs> almost, almost any project in um, in free software and open source, even for Windows, is built using these tools. And um, so it's well tested on one hand. On the other hand, there are new build systems, like um, SCONs and stuff like that, um, because people do find some problems with it enough to rewrite something from scratch. Like M MySQL 5.5, 5, I think, they moved to a different build system. They don't use any files anymore at all. They have something completely different now, which is hell to create an RPM for that. Um, so it has its deficiencies, definitely. Since I use this Zilla, which is a module that helps you forget about almost 90% of this, I don't, I don't care anymore. I'll show you how my distill looks like. This is a small module. You'll notice I only have changes. Dist I, &I the library, and T. That's all I have. In the Dist I, &I have a, um, I use distzilla, which is on CPAN. use the distini to do everything. Everything. For example, the distini that I have looks like this. Oh, let me remove the syntax. Looks like this. I have a name, which is a distribution name, not a module name. That's why it has a dash instead of double colon, because it's a distribution name. I have the author, including the email. I have another author, because I took ownership after the first one um, stopped maintaining it. <coughs> There's a license. I have a copyright holder. I have the version. And it actually puts the version <coughs> variable inside the code. <coughs> I don't even edit the code for a version bump. It uses this version, it edits the code, and puts in a version variable. And I have some, these are all plugins that ask this Zilla to do stuff. For example, this will ask this Zilla to create tests that check for pod syntax, correct pod syntax, that I haven't fucked up the, the documentation. This asks, this still to create a module PL, uh, a build PL for module build. This asks to use Pod Weaver, which lets it add stuff to the documentation automatically. Um, this creates a README from the pod. This checks the change log automatically. I don't have to check it. It makes sure that whatever version I'm using is in the change log. This checks that it compiles correctly. This searches automatically throughout all the code, including the tests, to find all the prereqs that I have <coughs> and, <coughs> sorry, and list them in the in build PL or the make file PL. So these are all plugins in this line. All I need to do, for example, to create a new distribution is this build. And it will check the this I, and I and it will create something. There it is. It's starting, guessing the main module, extracting distribution abstract, rewriting release test, creating uh, create override, uh, override readme, change log okay and then create a tarball that's it and I you create a directory and a tarball and if I go in I can see everything I have no problem it created the build PL it created just everything so if you're into this this Zilla is also a really 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 useful um, tool which moves all of it. I didn't see that this I should have a reference to the main module it has a distribution, and from the distribution it tries to find out what the main module is. It's pretty simple actually, it looks like this. If it has syslsip as a distribution name, it will try to find <coughs> sys colon colon host ip as a namespace for the main module, and it will search for a directory called sys and a file called host ip.pm. And it will take the description from there, it will take, it will add the version to it, 
it will do a lot of stuff automatically. <coughs> Yeah. All right. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you.